Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Masi Alinejad. She is an Iranian journalist and women rights activist. She lives in exile in the U.S. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, for a few years, you've been encouraging Iranian women to take off the mandatory head veil and film themselves. Since the death of Masa Amini, a 22-year-old Iranian woman at the hand of the so-called morality police in charge of ensuring that the veil is properly uh, worn, the country has seen what many call an unprecedented wave of protest, women taking off their hijabs, burning them, cutting their hair in public, Girls openly defying their teachers, shouting death to the dictator. We're obviously also seeing a crackdown. But despite uh, a communication blackout imposed by the regime, the movement lives on. What is happening right now in Iran? A revolution is happening. People are furious, especially after the brutal death of Mahsa Amini. She was only 22 years old. A Kurdish girl came from her city, Saqqaz, to Tehran for a vacation, but after two hours, her body, dead body, was given to the family. Why? Because just a bit of her hair was visible. She was not even unveiled. She was not, you know, let me, I actually want to show you. She was wearing this headscarf like this. But in Iran, bunch of police walking around, if you show a little bit of your hair, they arrest you, they bitten you, and they kill you, like what they did to Mahsa. That is why now many Iranian women burning their headscarves, cutting their hair to show their anger, not only against compulsory job, against the whole regime. And this is just the beginning to an end. They want an end for gender apartheid regime. Right. Uh, so we've seen uh, protests. We're seeing images essentially uh, through uh, social networks. Uh, so it's difficult to know how, how widespread this is. But we've heard the response from the regime, a crackdown and also condemnation by the supreme leader saying that this was a foreign pl plot against Iran by the, Z the Zionists, their allies and their collaborators. You know, can I tell you something? This movement has leaders. And the leaders are within the society. They have agency. They're not agent of any Western government. But I have to tell you, those who help the Iranian regime in the West, they should be blamed. Because I actually have uh, been warning many years the female politicians, the Western countries, about the dangers of hijab police. They never helped us. Instead, the Western female politicians, they helped the Iranian regime by wearing hijab, by bowing to the same regime. I mean, your president, Macron, from uh, French, uh, I mean, from France, many times tried to have a deal with our murderers. He never asked Iranian women to take off their hijab. The U.S. government's main focus is just to get a nuclear deal. Ségolène Royal, Federico Mogherini, Catherine Ashton, and many high representatives of the EU from the Western country they actually saving and empowering our regime, not asking Iranian women to go to the street and overthrow the regime. This is the true face of Iranian women saying to the rest of the world that we are here and we are asking an end for the Islamic Republic. We're not agent of any Western government. Instead, the Western government are trying to save Iranian regime. Right. Uh, obviously, there are, we're hearing talks that both the U.S. and the EU are considering uh, potential uh, sanctions. Uh, is this already something or is it much little too late? It's too late. Let me be very clear with you. Me and millions of other women have been telling the Western countries that when you actually dealing with these murderers, you're giving billions of dollars to the Iranian regime, it goes to revolutionary guards, to kill people. And now you've been witnessing that how teenagers, TikTok generations, are being killed in the streets. What is their crime? Just removing their hijab. And for years and years, President Macron, uh, President Biden, and many female politicians around the world, they were telling us, shh, you're causing Islamophobia? Or they were saying that we don't want to interfere in any kind of internal problem. But now, you are witnessing massacre happening. More than 100 people got killed only in two weeks, but the number even is more than this. The Iranian regime cut off the internet and killing innocent people. Guess what? At the same time, the tech companies, the U.S. tech companies, giving verified account to the murderers, 
Taliban and Islamic Republic have their own accounts on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, but at the same time, Iranians and women of Afghanistan, they're banned from using the same social media. So you see, empty words is not going to save lives. Empty words and little sanction is not going to help Iranians to survive and, and fight back for their basic rights. We need action. We, need, we don't need like people just cutting their hair. We want the Western government to cut their ties with the Islamic Republic. We want the Western government to recall their ambassadors. And we want an international women's march taking place across the globe. You remember for women's march, Burkini ban in America, in France, all the feminists got united. What is different between Western women and women in Iran and Afghanistan? We want the Western female politicians, feminists take to the streets and be the voice of Iranian young generation who are getting killed right now. Right. Uh, but obviously, uh, you know full well uh, the history of uh, those movements. There was a movement uh, most recently in 2019, over 300 people killed in just three days. And let's rewind to 2009. You were in, in Iran at, at the time, uh, the so-called Green Revolution. And there was another uh, woman uh, whose death uh, was actually uh, filmed on camera, uh, Neda, at the time. And it didn't change. The regime survived through a crackdown. So why is do you think a revolution is happening and the outcome will be different this time? That's a very good question. Look, Iranians made up their mind this time. This is the first time, actually, which makes it different from other uh, massive protests. This is the time that Iranians, uh, like shoulder to shoulder men and women, burning the headscarves. And this is not just a small piece of cloth, believe me. This headscarf is the main pillar of the Islamic Republic. It's the weakest point of the Islamic Republic. Basically, this headscarf in the hand of the Islamic Republic is like the Berlin Wall. Now women and men shoulder to shoulder, they're trying to tear this wall down and the Islamic Republic won't exist. This is just the beginning. But what makes it different that right now, this is a revolution against Islamic ideology. And Iranians know that in 2019, 1,500 people got killed. They know that they might get killed as well. So they pay the price. They risk their lives because they want to end the Islamic Republic. And let me tell you something. Obama, President Obama mentioned about Nada Agha Sultan. She was a symbol of uh, Iran protests in 2009. But what happened after that? Obama was trying to get a deal with the Islamic Republic. In 2019, again, 1,500 people got killed. What P President Macron did, trying to get a deal with Rouhani and now Ibrahim Raisi. And let me tell you another thing, Ruhol Lazam, a journalist from France, got kidnapped to Iraq and from Iraq to Iran, they executed him. What's going on? Still, you didn't shut down the embassy in France. So that actually helped the Iranian regime to survive. You know what? When people of Iran managed to shake the regime, as you mentioned, in different massive protests, at the same time, the Western government, the Western politicians, they go and shake the, the hand of the same regime. That can survive, help Iranian regime to survive. Otherwise, Iranian people are make up their mind. They will end this regime and the history will judge the Western government, the democratic countries. Right. Uh, you personally uh, are, I understand, living under uh, FBI protection because of an alleged plot against your life uh, by the uh, Iranian uh, regime. Obviously, they accused you of being a U.S. propaganda uh, person because you work for Voice of America and so on. I mean, how serious of a threat is there against your life? Maybe even more so because of uh, what we're witnessing and we've been discussing in this interview. First of all, I have to say that the word safe is too luxury for all people around the world who dare to speak up against Islamic ideology. I'm in safe house uh, under the protection of the FBI. Salman Rushdie was protected as well. What happened to him? Because of the fatwa which was issued by the leaders of the Islamic Republic, he was the target of assassination plot recently. As I mentioned about Ruhollah Zam, he lived in France. What happened to him? He got executed. So as far as the Islamic Republic is in power, not only me, millions of other people around the world won't be safe on U.S. soil, on Western soil. Yes, of course, I'm receiving death threats every day. My family are under pressure in Iran. Every single word that I'm saying to you right now, I don't know what they're going to do to my family. They put my brother in jail for two years, brought my sister on TV to disown me publicly, and they were trying to kill me here on U.S. soil. I'm not scared of my life. If 
they kill me and it's going to make awareness around the world that this regime should be boycotted and kicked out from everywhere, then I'm ready to be killed. I'm not scared of my life. What scares me, that the whole world is watching the massacres happening in Iran and they don't take strong action. That is scary. Believe me, if the democratic country do not get united to end Islamic terror, the Islamic terrorists will get united and they will end democracy. Right now that I'm talking to you, French citizen is in prison. Swedish citizen is in prison. US citizen, UK citizen, Belgium citizen. Why these countries do not get united and ask the Islamic Republic to downgrade, you know, just downgrade your diplomatic relation and ask them to release innocent political prison. The Islamic Republic understand only one language, language of pressure. And if the democratic countries do not punish the Islamic Republic, there is no point for them to stop killing people. Just as a very uh, quick conclusion, uh, so you really think that this time around, it is uh, in front of our eyes the beginning of the end of the Islamic Republic of Iran? This is the beginning of the end because Iranian young generation, they say that we are ready to die, but we're not going to live under humiliation. I call on Western democratic countries, take action. Otherwise, you are responsible about the killings as well. Masi Alinejad, I want to thank you very much uh, for being with us uh, here on France 24. And thank you very much for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24.